All right, so this is going to be my little video here of going through these twisties on my R1. It's a 2010. It's got a power commander. All just some little stuff, nothing major. Anyway, I'm going to run it. Do the twisties kind of how I'd like to do it. And uh see how it goes from there, but I think I'll explain a little bit more of how I'm kind of taking these twisties and how I'm using my throttle and my clutch and I'm not using the rear brake actually at all so that being said I'm just typically utilizing the clutch and sh downshifting front brake and trail braking into them. I don't really have to trail brake into them but I do anyway just good practice but uh, I'm gonna do this probably won't be talking a lot because it's kinda seems like it's a little windier today so my uh, video recorder doesn't pick up sound that great so most likely you just hear the music in the background, but uh, let's let it happen. And just to explain, like I know I've seen a lot of different people. They'll talk about how they, you know, utilize. Well, I utilize five percent of the front brake at tipping. As I start tipping, and I start slowly letting it go. My clutch. I stay in the friction zone because you can actually give it throttle and still maintain power, but not too much power that will make the rear tire slide. I know that uh, one thing I do that helps me tremendously and I found it just through running all the time is uh, when I'm going through the twisties I'll sit there and I'll kind of use, I'll actually flutter my, my clutch a little bit as I'm slowing down just to kind of ease up on the rear and if I want to release some power to it I can depending on what I'm doing to tighten my radius but it's got to be pretty quick it's not like um, a slow movement it's a pretty fast movement but anyway um, there's several other little tricks that I've learned doing the twisties and it's just really cool and they work um, I know a lot of people say you know when I'm coming out of the twisty and I see my exit, I can push on my right and it'll stand my bike out if I'm coming through a left curve and vice versa. So it'll actually stand your bike up. You just got to not push too hard, but hard enough that it'll stand the bike up and then you can run on the straightaway. Anyway, I'll uh, kind of show you what I'm talking about as I go through. So let's proceed. And I do like listening to music when I do these, so, you know. Make sure nobody's coming. Make a nice tight U turn. Use all the space available. Thank 
know behind me if they're behind me that I'm coming to a stop
there, obviously, but hey, the road is my oyster. on as I gear down. I'm going to turn it in here. And that
that is the standard. That is the standard there that uh, I use. So my, my biggest thing is keeping my line straight. So I get people that they want to do the cool curves like on the track, like take those real huge sweeps, which is cool if you can find them. But uh, I don't typically do that. I typically try to keep my line as straight as possible. That's what's going to keep me going faster anyway. So that may differ, differentiate from what some people think is taking curves, you know. But whatever they think, that's what they think. So as far as I'm concerned, if I can keep a straight line on a curve versus leaning and dragging my knee or whatever, I don't drag my knee anyway, but if I was to try to do that kind of stuff I would find deeper curves and longer sweeps tighter but I don't think the rows out here would be that great for it but then again you never know maybe you go to the tail of the drag anyway that's how I read them so we'll go from there and hopefully that helps a little bit in different techniques but uh, I'm going to be uploading a video later on my R1 doing one parking spot U-turns and things like that so stay tuned for that one alright